How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my Lord the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me in the morning sealed the promise
we just thank you that we have a living hope in you. Sometimes I wonder how people go life without you. It's hard. There's no one they can really rely on. I just thank you for being my friend and my savior and my living hope, God. And I just pray that if there's someone here that doesn't understand that because they haven't formed a relationship with you, Jesus, that they would come to know you here and now. We just want them to have the joy that we have. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I left a skid mark on the carpet. I wanted to build a ramp, but my wife advised me not to. Go big or go home. I like that. Nobody got up to leave. That means each one of you want to go big, right? Now... If you were here last week, it might not make a lot of sense, but we'll get there, hopefully, right? Go, go big or go home. As I said last week, that has been the slogan that I have uh, lived by for most of my life, and I said, uh, uh, I have the scars to prove it, right? Do all things big in life. I didn't say this last week, but I don't know about you, but... When I get to stand before Jesus and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You're a little crazy, but well done, good and faithful servant. I want to be spent when I get to heaven, right? So go big. Go big or go home. Well, we're going to be reading from 2 Kings chapter 2 this morning in a few minutes. And if you're in the youth group 6 through 12, if you didn't catch the slide, you're, you're free to head upstairs with the youth group as well. Last week, we, we did, we started a three-week series uh, to start out the new year called Go Big with God. So I don't want any of you to go home. Go Big with God is the name of the series. If you recall, I said this series is not about making New Year's resolutions. It's, it's nothing wrong with trying to make changes in your life, but that's not what this is about. It is about going big with God in 2021, no matter what happens. If things get worse or if things get better, go big with God. Amen? Amen. God's in control. God's on the throne. We are, if we're a disciple, born again disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's called us to do something for the kingdom. 
Keep our eyes focused on him. In a nutshell, that's what this series is about. Last week, I, I challenged each, each of you to read a chapter a day with me through the book of Ephesians. Six chapters in six days. I challenge you to read and meditate each day on what, on what you read and what your go big with God dream is. We talked about dream big last week. What is your go big dream with God for the new year? And to expand, we looked at uh, the prayer of Jabez, to expand your territory in a spiritual way. That was the challenge last week. A deeper, a spiritual way, meaning a, a deeper relationship with God. A, a greater love for those uh, who do not know Jesus yet, right? Uh, a deeper passion to serve, etc. I also shared with you that today I would share my go big with God dream for the new year. Now after riding in here on a motorcycle, how many of you really want to hear that? A little nervous? Well, first of all, it begins with the jump. No. <laughs> now, outside of what I briefly shared about my big dream uh, for a new location, I want to share with you my big dream for this fellowship spiritually. Now, most definitely, number one, most definitely, I pray that all of us, all of us, would develop a deeper personal relationship with Jesus to love him with all of our heart, mind, and soul. Amen, right? Amen. Most definitely. I also pray that each of you would develop a heart for your neighbor, those that believe and those who do not believe yet. It's, it's easy to come and, and have a heart for somebody sitting next to you that you see each week, right? We're born again disciples, yes, I love you. But I want to, uh, my, my dream big for all of us is to love our neighbor, everyone, if they're a born again believer or not, if they agree with you politically or not. Nobody amen that one. Love your neighbor no matter what. In other words, put them first. It's a big dream your pastor has, isn't it? Amen. By the way, it's a big dream for myself. Another big dream as your pastor is to see each of you develop a heart to serve. To get involved in our church ministries. It, it, it's Solely for this reason, I am doing the leadership energizing class starting next Sunday at 6 p.m. for only four weeks, every Sunday night for only four hours total. And this class is for everyone. Say everyone. 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 For those already involved in ministry and for those who, who are not but are interested. You see, we're all leaders. We are. We're all leaders in some way. So please make your pastor's dream come true and plan on being at this class. Go big and don't stay home. You see what I did there? <laughs> Go big and don't stay home. That's for the leadership energizing class. Now ultimately my big go big with dream with God is to expand my territory is all about this church, this body of believers, making a difference for, for eternity in the lives of people. That's it. For this fellowship, the Bridge Church, reaching people like you, 21712th Street in Idaho Falls, Idaho, to make a difference for eternity for people in our community and around the world who we support with missions. Our tribe right here, yes, there's other great tribes, churches in our community. May the Lord bless them. May they reach many people as well. But may we do what God's called us to do in the way that God's called us to do it. That is my big Go big with God dream for this fellowship. Did you notice it's a dream that includes each and every one of us? What is your part? So let's pray before we turn to 2 Kings chapter 2 and look at part 2 in this series, which is go big with God. And today is ask big. Father, we thank you for this time. I pray that you would 
open our hearts and minds to receive from the living God. Lord, may your Holy Spirit just be here in a very mighty, precious way today. I pray in Jesus' name that each one of us would truly be challenged through the word, that we would uh, truly desire to do something bigger than who we are. And Lord, that we wouldn't be afraid to ask big as well. So teach us, Lord, as we look as we turn to the Word of God today. And I thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, speaking of asking big things from God, listen to some of these prayers asked by children. Are you ready for this? The heart out of the mouth of babes, the Bible says. So listen to these. Please make my parents understand... If I don't eat salad, I do better at school. <laughs> Here's another one. Dear God, I need you to make my mom not allergic to cats. I really want a, a cat, and I really don't want to ask my mom to move out. <laughs> it's a big ask. That's a big ask. Here's another one. Dear God, can you get me a smartphone? Santa must have forgot. Uh, here's one. I saw my big brother walking out of the shower on accident. God, can you erase that from my brain? That's a big ask. Dear God, please don't let it rain on Saturday. The first ball I hit will be for you. Dear God, thank you for the baby brother, but what I asked for was a puppy. <laughs> and the last one, big ask. Dear God, please send me a pony. I never asked for anything before. You can look it up. Now, how many of you know it's okay to go big with God with our requests? It's okay. He's a great big God. He can handle it, right? We will see, we're going to see that this morning in 2 Kings chapter 2. Before I read, let me, let me set up or catch you up on what is happening in this text. You will see that there are, are two prophets both of them with similar names, Elijah with a J and Elijah, Elijah with an S. Elijah and Elijah. The first recording of Elijah that you can, if you want to look back and study him, appears in 1 Kings chapter 17 uh, with, with this warning to King Ahab as a for an impending drought. God uses uh, Elijah. It's the first time we see him. He's obviously already a man of God. And this is the first recording we see where God is using him as a prophet. And Elijah is telling King Ahab that there's going to be a drought for two or three years. And from there you can read about Elijah as he goes on to do bigger things for God. Elijah is a prophet on Mount Carmel where he challenges all the, the, the worshipers of Baal to come and to call down their God, and Amat Carmel, if you know the story, to come and send fire on the offering that they put up. All day long they cry out, they cut themselves, they do all these things, and nothing happens. And then Elijah steps up, and he says, pour water, and he poured tons of water on the, on the sacrifice. They filled up a trough all around it, and then Elijah calls out to God in, in a prayer, and God sends fire down, and he burns it all up, and then they proceed to take all the worshipers of Baal and, and kill them. So that's the Elijah that we're looking at. He does many other things. And then we have Elijah who we can see he left all that he had to follow Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19. He decides to, to follow him. It says uh, Elijah goes back. He's going to follow Elijah. He says, give me a minute. He goes back. He says goodbye to his family. He kills his oxen. He sacrifices them. And he burns his cart. And he, gives, he gets rid of everything he has to follow Elijah. So here in 2 Kings chapter 2, we're going to read in a minute. Elijah, Elijah is about to be taken up into heaven. And you will see that it's no secret 
that this is about to happen. God is foretelling what's about to happen. You're going to see that as we read through this text. Okay, so here we are. 2 Kings chapter uh, 2. We're going to read down through uh, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elijah were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah and Elijah, uh, Elijah said to Elijah, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elijah said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. It's interesting. All of a sudden, Elijah is trying to ditch Elijah. I don't really know why, but uh, Elijah's not having any part of it. Uh, maybe Elijah's just concerned, concerned for him because he knows the Lord's about to take him and he doesn't know what that's going to look like. So he, he's trying to get rid of him. Okay, so let, let's continue. But Elijah said, as surely as the Lord lives and, and as, as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elijah and asked. So they didn't go to Elijah. They went to Elijah. Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elijah replied. But do not speak of it. So first of all, they go to the city and there is a group of prophets there. And God has not kept it a secret that Elijah is about ready to be taken up. He's already foretold these prophets and they know. So they go out and they don't go to Elijah and say, hey, you know, are you ready to go? Because they go to Elijah, his, his attendant, and they say, hey, something's about ready to happen to your master. And Elijah says, we're not going to speak of it. Yeah, keep it, keep it on the lowdown or let's don't talk about it. Maybe the Lord won't take him. I, I don't know. But he says, we're not going to talk about it. Well, we're not going to talk about it. It's no secret. The Lord's already telling people. But he, he wants to shut it down. He's, you're going to see that again in a minute. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elijah. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So again, he tries to leave him, but Elijah's not having any part of it. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho, another group of prophets, went up to Elijah and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan, the Jordan River. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elijah had, been, had stopped at the Jordan. So they're up above looking down. These two came to the Jordan River and these guys are at a distance and they're watching them. Are you with me? Elijah took his cloak, his coat, he rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left. And the two of them crossed over on dry ground. If the Lord could part the Red Sea, he wouldn't have a problem parting the Jordan River. Amen? Amen. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elijah replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours otherwise not. So, hey, if when the Lord comes to take me and, and, you, and you get to see it happen, then I guess that's an answer to you that you're going to get this double portion of my spirit. But if you don't get to see that, I guess you don't get it. It's pretty much what Elijah says. I mean, how do you answer that? So, you know, he reckons it as best he can. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire. Can you imagine seeing this? Just picture this. Suddenly, a chariot of fire and a horse of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. By the way, there's only one other person in the Bible that we know about that's recorded 
in the Bible that God took up to heaven that, that didn't die a physical death. How many of you know who that is? Enoch. The Bible says, Enoch loved the Lord and then was no more. So we know according to the Bible, just according to the Bible, we don't know if God did it in other, other cases that he didn't document for us to read about. There's two people in heaven that were taken up that didn't die a physical death on earth before they got to be present with the Lord. I have my theories why, but that's a whole nother sermon. So Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah saw this and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elijah saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and he tore them apart. That was, that was something they did in that culture. They tore their, their clothes, threw ash on their head, uh, you know. And, and he saw all this and he was obviously awestruck and just like, woe's me, right? Now the remaining of this chapter, in chapter 2, after Elijah watched Elijah taken up to heaven, he picked up his, his coat, his cloak. Returning to the Jordan River, he called out to the Lord and he struck the water with the cloak. The water opened up just like it did with Elijah and Elijah walked across on dry ground. So he just did the same miracle that Elijah had done. This act affirmed the transition of the prophetic office from Elijah to Elijah as well as the fulfillment of Elijah's request. The miraculous crossing of the Jordan was witnessed by men from the school of the prophets. They had seen all of this, this group. If, we, if you go on to read in 2 Kings 2.15, it says, Now when the sons of the prophets who were at the Jericho saw him opposite them, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. From that point forward, these men appear to be following or followed Elijah as their spiritual leader. At 2 Kings chapter 4, you can read about that. Now, two other miracles soon follow the parting of the Jordan River to, to conclude, to wrap up this chapter. First, Elijah turned bad water into clean water. And then second, he cursed a group of young men who mocked him and two bears came out from the woods and attacked them. And if you read that, it tells why they even mocked them. They were mocking him because he was bald. Don't mock me. You guys awake? If you read that, they were calling, they were calling him names. And one of the things it says in the scripture is this balding old guy. And Elijah, he didn't like it. So he cursed them and the Lord sends two bears out to, to mess these young guys up. You think they learned their lesson? You never know what you can do when you're walking real close with the Lord, amen? <laughs> the taking of Elijah to heaven, the parting of the water, the response of the company of prophets, and the two additional miracles... Recorded immediately after his, uh, all this, uh, this all affirms that Elijah's request for a double portion was granted by the Lord. Not Elijah. Elijah didn't grant this double portion. Don't lose track of that. We don't, we don't need to go to somebody's grave and grave soak, as some the people are teaching today, to, to grave soak on some great person so you'll receive a portion of their spirit. That's not even biblical. The Lord granted his request and gave him a double portion of the blessing. Not Elijah's spirit. They say that, but Elijah's spirit to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. In case of Elijah, to be, at, to be present with the body is to be present with the Lord. So his spirit didn't leave and go into Elijah. Don't grab hold of that. They're talking about the blessing. The miraculous powers that the Lord bestowed upon Elijah. The Lord did it. Now it's really interesting. The Bible records exactly, exactly twice as many miracles through Elijah. 28 miracles took place and 14 through Elijah. It's almost like God knows what he's doing. He shows us in the word of God. Yes, he got a double portion. 
I'm sure there was more miracles, but the Bible records 14 for one and 28 for the other. Double portion. There is a God in heaven. Here it is. Elijah decided to go big or go home. He knew that Elijah was getting ready to leave and he decided this is my chance to go big or go home, to go big with God. And this is the lesson for each of us today as we look at how we can go big with God in 2021. Ask big. Last week, dream big. Lord, expand my spiritual territory. This week, ask big. Lord, give me a double portion. That's the ask big. Lord, give me a double portion. Seriously, how many of you truly desire to be used by God in powerful ways? How many of you truly desire to be used by God in powerful ways? To be kingdom-minded, born-again believers, ready and willing to make a difference for eternity. Because that's the difference we make for eternity. Heaven and earth will pass away. When God uses us to make a difference in somebody's life, it's eternal. We cannot lose perspective of that. We cannot lose perspective. If that is you, please repeat after me. I believe I have it for you. The next slide. Lord, repeat after me. Lord, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. I told you last week, be careful what you pray for. I suckered you all in. Now you said the words and you prayed it. Lord, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. Again, this isn't Elijah's spirit. This isn't one of your relative's spirit. This isn't some other spirit. This would be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the gift his father promised. The Holy Spirit. Understand, once you acknowledge you are a sinner in need of a Savior and accept the gift of grace given by Jesus on the cross, it says this in Ephesians 1.13, Having believed, you were then marked with a seal, a promised Holy Spirit. So once you are a born-again believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, confessed Him, admitted you're a sinner, confessed Him as Lord of your life, asked Him to forgive you, asked Him into His life, the Bible clearly says at that moment, at that moment, you are marked with the seal which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's, there's no other thing you need to do. You receive the Holy Spirit then, but there is more of the Holy Spirit. There's more of an infilling of the Holy Spirit, which we're going to dive into a little bit. You see, the Holy Spirit, the Bible is clear. The Holy Spirit, among many things, the Holy Spirit is our helper, our comforter, and our guide. He guides us into righteousness. He convicts us when we're about ready to do something wrong. He's that little angel on your shoulder. Probably shouldn't do that. Right? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the living God in us, speaking to our spirit, helping us overcome the sin in our lives. And here's the deal. I truly believe the deeper your relationship is with God, the more people will see him at work in your life. If you don't hear anything else today, I want you to hear these two sentences I'm about to read to you. The double portion comes as you walk close to God. The double portion comes as you walk close to God. There is a continuing filling of his spirit in our lives. The closer you get with God, the more his spirit fills you. The more, the closer you walk with God, the less of you there is, the less sin, the less of your sin nature is in you. The more of that gets out of you, the more of God fills you. Picture that. The last week, the challenge was to read a chapter a day in the book of Ephesians and meditate on what it said throughout the day while, while asking God to reveal his go big with God dream for your life. This week, this next few weeks, I'm going to be challenging this fellowship as we're in the first month of 2021. This week, 
I'm going to challenge each of you to read in the book of Acts, the first six chapters in the book of Acts, starting tomorrow, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to Saturday, six, the first six chapters. Why the book of Acts? Because that is, uh, you're going to read about the Holy Spirit being poured out on believers, which Jesus promised, which was prophesied about. How the Holy Spirit comes upon believers, and how it emboldened them, and how the early church began. And I think it's a great place for us to start, to read, to be encouraged, that we are believers just like them. We are the church. The miracles, all the signs and wonders, all the things that happened with them can happen with us and it should happen with us as we walk closer with him. But I want to encourage you, read with us, read every day, read the book of Acts chapter 1 tomorrow. Just read as we're all in one accord reading the same thing and then pray and meditate upon what you read. Let the Lord challenge you. You see, I believe it's a great encouragement to see God at work in the early church as he poured out his spirit. That's the first part of my challenge. You guys want me to tell you the rest of it? Also, I'm going to ask you to fast and pray. To fast and pray. Individually and together. Jesus gave instructions in Matthew 6 for believers to give, pray, and fast. Read it. Sometime today. Matthew chapter 6. His his telling the disciples, he says, when you give, okay, when, okay, so Jesus is saying, okay, he, he's wanting us to give, and then he read down through it, it says, and when you pray, oh, okay, he, he's, he wants us to pray, he's not saying, uh, if, if you decide to or maybe, and then he says, when you fast, so he's calling us to do these things. So what is Fasting. How many of you are going, man, I wish I wasn't here today. The pastor's <laughs> going to ask me not to eat all that candy he gave us last week. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to eat those Twinkies I got at home. It's going to be okay. What is fasting? You see, I, I believe the greatest explanation is given by Pastor Jensen Franklin in his book called, are you ready for this? It's a deep theological uh, uh, definition of his book. Jensen Franklin, this book is the greatest book I've ever read. And here's, here's the name of the book. Are you ready? Ready to write it down? Fasting. The book is called Fasting. I would encourage you, if you really want to understand, he, he has great stories and insight. It's not like this, you read a page of all this theological jargon and you're like, I don't even know what I read. This book is incredible. It encourages you. It cheers you on. You're just like, man, I don't want to eat for a year after reading this book. Get the book if you really want to go deep with it. But I want you to listen to what he writes in chapter 1. Just a small part. Jensen Franklin. These are his words. Since there are so many misconceptions about fasting, I first want to clarify what fasting, biblical fasting, is not. Fasting is not merely going without food for a a period of time. That is dieting, maybe even starving. But fasting, it is not. Nor is fasting something done only by fanatics. I really want to drive that point home. Fasting is not to be done only by religious monks alone in a cave somewhere. The practice of fasting is not limited to ministers or special occasions. He goes on to write, stated simply, biblical fasting is refraining from food for a spiritual purpose. Fasting has always been a normal part of a relationship with God, as expressed by by the impassioned plea of David in Psalm 42. Fasting brings one into deeper, more intimate, and powerful relationship with the Lord. When you eliminate food from your diet for a number of days, your spirit becomes uncluttered by the things of this world and amazingly sensitive to the things of God. As David stated, deep calls unto deep in Psalm 42. David was fasting. His hunger and thirst for God were greater than his natural desire for food. One more little paragraph from Jensen Franklin. 
As a result, he reached a place where he could cry out from the depths of his spirit to the depths of God. Even in the midst of his trial, once you've experienced even a glimpse of that kind of intimacy with God, our Father, the holy creator of the universe, and the countless rewards and blessing that follow, your whole perspective will change. You will soon realize that fasting is a secret source of power that is overlooked by many. Powerful words. I want to challenge. I want to challenge you to fast this week. Be, be it a day. Maybe you've never fasted before. Skip a meal. Do a whole day. Maybe do a couple days. Do three days. Do the whole week. I want to challenge you in that. This is a biblical principle. Jesus says when you fast. I know some of us might not be able to for certain physical reasons, and I get it. It's between you and the Lord. Next week when you come in the door, I'm going to be standing there, and I'm going to ask each one of you, did you fast? <laughs> I'm not. I would never do that. If it's between you and the Lord, I want to challenge you in this biblical principle, challenge you to go deeper with God. Give, give it up and, and, and see what the Lord does. Just, and, and when you skip a meal, like if you, you skip lunch, or you're supposed to at the meal times that you skip, instead of eating, you go before the Lord. Skip the meal, spend the time with the Lord. I've fasted many times over my years as a believer, and I know many of you in here have as well. It's a wonderful experience. It really draws you closer to God. Lord, Lord, give us a double portion, amen? amen? So now what is prayer? Everyone say this with me, please. I think I have it for you on the screen. What is prayer? Go to the next thing. Prayer is open communication with Abba Father. Say that with me. Prayer is open communication with Abba Father. Well, who's Abba Father? That is a... a uh, I believe it's a Hebrew word. It may be Greek. I can't remember. But it's a word that is, is very endearing. It, it goes deeper than just say, uh, communicate with, with the God the Father. I mean, we say that. It's kind of this different picture. But Abba Father, that word in, in our English uh, translation, the best way to describe it means daddy. When you call your dad or your kids call you daddy, it melts your heart, doesn't it? Daddy, can I have a piece of cake? Oh, I guess. I mean, how do you say no, daddy, right? But see, the creator of the universe, who spoke everything into existence, right? Who knows the number of hairs on your head, who knows everything, right? We can call him daddy. Because see, he wants to talk with you. You don't have to have, you know, some, all the verbiage, well, I can't pray because I don't know the right words. Nonsense. Talk to God. Just talk to him. Tell him. He already knows what you're going to say. Well, why do I need to say it? Because he wants you to have faith to talk to him. He listens. Well, he never answers my prayer. Well, I think he did. The answer was no. Well, he's a mean daddy. No, he's a good daddy because he knows if he says yes to every crazy prayer this pastor has, you guys would be, I don't know, probably been left a long time ago. I have big, crazy dreams. Anybody who's ever sat down with me knows. And I'm thankful he says no a lot. People have been here the whole time I've been here choking on their water. Sometimes he says no, sometimes he says wait, and sometimes it happens right away. But it's not about your timing. He's a good dad. He's a great big God. If you're mad at him, tell him. Tell him. We need to respect him. We need to treat him. Uh, he, he is a holy, just God. I mean, it's not like you, you, you don't have that reverence for him. That's not what I'm saying. But, but you can talk to him. That's what prayer is. 
How many of you want to talk to your daddy this week? And that's what I want to challenge you to do. You see, because that's what it is. He wants to simply, t wants us to simply talk with him. I want you to look and listen at these words found in Psalm 62 as Don, as Don makes his way up here. Psalm 62. It says, Find rest, O my soul. In God alone my hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. It's pretty encouraging in times like we're living in today, isn't it? My refuge. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. Say that with me. I will not be shaken. My salvation and honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Now listen to verse 8. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him. For God is our refuge. And then it says, Selah. You know what Selah means? When you're reading through a book of Proverbs or you're reading somewhere in the Bible and you see that little word off the side that says Selah. It means stop. Stop right there. Meditate. Ponder. Take that in before you go any further. All the times we say amen, we should be saying sila. Sila. Because it means take it in. Amen means let it be. Yes, it's, it's, it's equally as important, but take it in. Take it in, church. Pour out your hearts to him. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to pour out your hearts to the Lord this week more than ever before. If you are able, we're going to do a few things this week around here. If you're able, you can join us every day at noon right here. We're going to come in here, uh, right here at the church for encouragement as we come to pray together as body believers every day starting tomorrow at noon throughout the week. We're going to meet right here. And as we were worshiping, the Lord gave me an image that I want us to start doing this week if you come at noon. Uh, we have something else going on midweek. I'll tell you in a second. But we're going to start. I'm going to put some white paper out here. Anytime anybody comes, we're going to pray together uh, at noon. And then we'll leave you alone if you want to spend some time before the Lord yourself. But I'm going to ask everybody to write, write their prayer down. And we're going we're to just put it on this altar. And we're going to begin to do that this week. And then Wednesday night. From, six, from 7 to 8, we're having a midweek service. Child care provided. We're going to have a little bit of worship. We're going to invite you down. If you're fasting or not, you can come and be a part of that. We're going we're gonna to worship unto the Lord, have a few encouraging words, maybe have an open mic for you to share what God is doing in your life. And we're going to have those white papers. And each time we come and pray, whatever God lays on your heart, you don't have to put your name on it. Nobody's going to read them. And we're just going to begin. I saw this image. We're just going to begin to fill this, this altar up with with the prayers of the saints. And we're going to pray that they, they're a sweet aroma that rise up to the throne room of grace, as the Bible says, before Abba Father. If you can't come at noon, I understand. Spend some time in prayer. You, you can write it down on a piece of paper wherever you are, and you can bring them next Sunday and throw them up here on the altar. Wednesday night, from 7 to 8, kind of a midweek service, worship, encourage, time of prayer. Lord, give us a double portion. That's a big ask. That was a big ask from Elijah, right? And the Lord granted it. And I believe he wants to grant us a double portion in this, this in, in expanding our territory, this spiritual expansion in our lives. Once again, go big with God in 2021. Yes, dream big. And now let's ask big. And next week, with all these prayer requests up here, we're going to finish out our series with this last one. Go big with God. Expect big. Dream big. Ask big. Expect big. We're going to come back together next week. 
Lord, give us a double portion as you expand our spiritual territory. So let me recap really quick, really quick what's happening this week. Read the first six chapters from the book of Acts. One a day starting tomorrow, Acts chapter 1, Tuesday, Acts chapter 2, you get it. Fast, set aside some time to give up eating, to draw closer to God, whatever that looks like for you, if you can do it. And then pray, pour out your heart to him as individual, as individuals and come together with us if timing allows you to be here. Whatever that schedule looks like to you in your busy schedule. We stand with me. I pray and hope. You know, this is really about us asking big and for the spiritual thing, but there are things taking place in our country that we know the Bible says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. If we fast and pray and come together as the church and believe the word of God. So it's an, another great timing with, with the Lord why we're going to be doing this on top of all these other reasons. So I'm challenging you. Ask big. Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this fellowship. I thank you for the word of God, the Bible given to us to study, to know, to understand, to grow, to be like Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you that he went to the cross. I thank you that he died for my sins. I thank you, Lord, that I had enough inside of me to recognize that I am a sinner, Lord, and that I needed a way back to you. And I thank you and I recognize the blood, the gift that came from the cross of Calvary. And Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that... I've accepted you into my life and that you are changing me, transforming me to be more like Jesus. God, I pray that for everyone that can hear my voice today. I pray for everyone in here that they've accepted that. And God, now as born again disciples of Jesus, Lord, as we prayed for you to expand our territory in a spiritual sense, Lord, now we are asking big. We are believing, God, for each one of us, for this church, this body of believers. We are believing that you, Lord, would give us a double portion to grow, to become more like Jesus, to be uh, just on fire for you. So, Lord, I just truly ask, as we read the book of Acts and fast and pray, that you would hear us I pray that we would hear you. Hear that still small voice. Read in the word of God and know that you're speaking to us. We would allow your Holy Spirit to help comfort and guide us in our faith journey with you. And I thank you for these wonderful people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Pray you have a great week. Don't run off if you need to. Fellowship. I'm going to be giving rides on the motorcycle. Five bucks each. You're welcome for that. God bless. We'll see you soon.